Good morning, everyone. Happy Passover. Happy Palm Sunday. Happy beautiful day out there. <laughs> Welcome to the Sunday morning service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad you can join us this morning on Zoom or Facebook Live. Let's begin our service with our opening song, One with the One. <laughs> I live, I move, I have my being in God. I am, God is, I am one with the one. You live. So now, please join me in prayer. Just turning our attention inward, coming into this present moment, feeling that part of us that every moment just seeks to experience goodness in every way possible. And to recognize that as the impulse of the one life of God that one infinite love, joy, abundance, wholeness, creativity, intelligence, every form of well-being that can be experienced is the nature of this one in which we all live and that lives through and as each of us. And so I know that God is absolutely present and we are feeling its presence throughout our time together. We feel that vibration of love in which we are all interconnected. I know that we feel the love of all those who are of service this morning. I know that we are touched and uplifted by the beauty, the inspiration, the artistry of our musicians, Sam and Karen, of our soloist, Jamie, of Dean, who leads our chants. And I absolutely know that God speaks to us this morning through Dr. Mark. That Dr. Mark is that channel through which the word that we have come to hear, the word that reminds us of who we truly are as spiritual beings so we can experience that spiritual nature more fully in our lives, is spoken. And it touches our hearts. It uplifts us. And so I give thanks for all the blessings that I know we received during our time together. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it's already so in the mind of God. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. Peace. 
And so now, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now let's join in our congregational song, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am, and so it is. God is the joy that I am. God is the joy that I am. God is the joy that I am, and so it is. Every day in every way, I have everything that I need. When I say love is the way, I have every chance to succeed. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. And so it is. Where I go, I always know that God's forever on my side. As I grow, I'm in the flow. I only need it to decide that God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. <laughs> so this is the time where we now get to settle down and get still for a few moments. So for the next five minutes, we're going to meditate. And I invite you to just get still in your bodies. Close your eyes. Turn your attention inward. And again, allowing our thoughts to just focus on the present moment, I invite you to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
I'm naked. Naked Lord 
Yeah. Thank you, Jamie Lula. Wonderful to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good morning. Welcome. Wonderful to have you here with us at Virtual Church. We're happy for a new day. For a new day, yes. Um, it's a very holy and sacred week for many people around the world. Uh, for people from the Jewish faith, Passover began on Saturday night, and this commemorates uh, the Hebrew exodus from Egypt and their, uh, the end of their enslavement by the Pharaoh. So in uh, Exodus, uh, it tells the story of Moses goes to the Pharaoh. And uh, because God had told Moses, tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. Uh, but you know, the Pharaoh was not really amenable to this idea. He had a great workforce in the Hebrew people. He had thousands of people doing all the, the labor for him. So he's not going to let them go. And so what happens is that God starts to visit plagues upon the Egyptians. Just your basic things, you know, locusts, frogs, boils, that kind of thing. And the last of the ten plagues would be the death of the firstborn in every family. Now, the Jewish people knew to put lamb's blood on the doorway, around the doorway, and the angel of death would pass by their household. So after this plague, the Pharaoh finally, finally releases the Hebrew people. And they follow Moses uh, out into the desert. <laughs> And then the Pharaoh, of course, changes his mind because he realizes that his workforce is gone. And so his army closes in on the Hebrew people right at the Red Sea. Now Moses, this is where Moses parts the Red Sea. And he and the Hebrew people are able to cross. But when the Pharaoh's army starts to cross, the sea collapses in upon them and they are all drowned. And so now they start a 40-year journey through the desert to come to the promised land. I mean, wow, that's epic. That's a great, great story and something to really honor. Now, personally, growing up, I don't know about you, but I loved Easter. Easter was probably really my favorite holiday uh, because it was really big in my house as a kid. Um, probably, uh, well, probably not bigger than Christmas, but for, but for me, I, I was more excited about Easter. Uh, part of that was we always got new clothes. When I was a kid, you always got new clothes for Easter. I don't know if anybody still does that anymore, but we always did. We got a set of new clothes, and we had to go show them to my grandparents and my aunt and uncle and let them admire our new clothes. Um, and, of course, it involved lots of church and uh, Easter candy and Easter bunnies and eggs, chocolate eggs, mostly chocolate eggs. I didn't really care for the other kind of eggs. I mean, what kid do you know wants egg salad, right? No, we want chocolate eggs. Okay? And then... Um, Lots of family and food, 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 food. So Easter was a great, uh, great thing. I loved it. Um, and of course, you know, I grew up back east. So um, with this advent of spring and Easter and Passover, we would start to see crocuses come up and daffodils and tulips and all those spring flowers. And we knew that after a long winter, particularly this was true for me back east, after what was always a long winter, to see new life coming up through the ground, you knew like, okay, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Because I'm telling you, sometimes it seemed like there were months of gray and months of slush and months of cold. And you think, are we going to live this way forever? But then those first flowers would pop up and you think, oh, there's hope. It's going to get better. It is absolutely going to get better. So you know, Everybody I know, I think, is, is sort of on the grow right now. We are living in an extraordinary time, and I think everybody's growing. We're all reaching beyond where we've reached before. Um, and now I think this is a good thing, because as I always say, I'd rather be green and growing rather than ripe and rotten. You know? And so I think that as I look... Um, at the story that Jesus was ushering in a new order of things. And with a new order, as is so often the way, the old form could not carry the new content. So let me tell you this. There's a story of a boy who is um, rowing an, a wise, wise old man across a very wide river. So he's rowing the boat, and he's got the old wise man in the boat with him. And they're out there in about the middle of the river, and the old man says to the boy, boy, do you know anything about biology? And the boy says, no. Says, How about geology? No. Astronomy? No, no, I don't know anything about that. I know about rowing the boat. That's what I know about. 
And the old wise man says to the boy, he says, son, you are missing out on life's greatest enjoyments. And suddenly, though, the boat was caught in a current, and the boat was dashed against the rocks, breaking the boat. The boat starts to break apart. And the boy says to the wise old man, sir, do you know how to swim? And the old man says, no, not at all. And the boy says, sir, you are missing out on 100% of life. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, I think that what this points to is how you need to study what matters. And I think, at least in my life, the science of mind matters. In understanding my relationship with God, with spirit, with the infinite, that matters. That really makes a difference. So, you know, so often the old, the old mindset, the old way of being doesn't welcome the new. It, it sort of becomes encrusted, you know, the, the, we get used to things, the way things have always been. Boy, I'll tell you, that is not a phrase we have used at this church in the last year. This is the way we've always done it. That has completely left our vocabulary because we are in such unprecedented times. And I suppose that's probably true for you as well. But, you know, new ideas are often restricted, even by us who we say we're open to new ideas. We resist change. I remember reading uh, a while back something about Jack Parr. You all remember Jack Parr used to be on TV. And he said, my life is one long obstacle course with me being the chief obstacle. And I thought, oh my God, I know exactly what he means. I know exactly how he feels there. Because sometimes I look at my life and I think, I'm the biggest obstacle in my life. My way of thinking, my way of doing things, my old way of being. When we see negativity in the world, we have to ask, where am I like that? And we don't want to be like that. We absolutely do not want to be like that. When I see war in the world, where am I at war with other people? Where am I uh, not at home? Uh, where am I not being loving? Where am I not showing up as the kind of spiritual person I say I am? You know, Jesus also gave this teaching, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and everything else will be added. I think this is an enormous time saver. You know, I, I love time saving things. Um, see, because it's time for us to do deeper work and that deeper work is to go to God for God. Not to go to God to fix things, not to go to God for things, not to go to God to get us out of some jam we've gotten ourselves into, but simply to go to God for God, to be with God for the sake of being with God. I think our way has been very much, if I have a problem, you know, use and do everything I know how to use spiritually and do spiritually to just get out of it. I often equate that with that guy you would see at the circus when you were a kid, the guy who would spin plates on sticks. He'd you know, have a stick here and put a spin. He's spinning this plate, and then he's spinning another plate, and then he does one on his foot, and then he puts one on his chin. And if you can imagine, he's spin. Now, that's fantastic. What a skill. But you know, as soon as he stops doing it, it all falls apart. As soon as he stops all that action, and that's very much like us, doing mental activities to try and get things to be the way we want them to be. Another approach, I think a higher approach, a more evolved approach, is to say, I'm going to put my relationship with God with spirit first. I will go to God simply to be in the presence of God, and out of that, I will trust that everything else that I need, everything that would add to my life in a healthy, expansive way, will absolutely come to me. <sighs> this would be a new habit for, <clears throat> for many of us, I believe. So when we wake up in the morning, I always encourage people to do some practice when you first get up, you know, to pray, to meditate early. And why I do this is because if we don't, as the day goes forward, what I have found is if I don't do this, as the day goes forward, I go backward. Yeah, because what I'll do is I'll start to remember. You know, I go backward and I remember who I'm mad at and who I haven't forgiven and who I don't like and where I think I'm separate from God and where I'm separate from other people. And this person said this to me and this person did that. In time, with God, I give away anything that prevents the newness because my desire to experience the newness of spirit is so much greater than any value I get from hanging on to that little piddly stuff from way back when. 
So it becomes more of a surrender. God, take this impatience I have. I surrender it to you. God, take my judgmentalness. Oh, I surrender that to you again and again and again. You know, take away all that is not the real me. Recently, I had um, a situation with someone where I felt I would have been 100% justified in being really mad and hurt. Um, and so we could say that I had a crucifixion. So we all understand what that's like. We all have crucifixions, right? And, and I think that everybody I know would support my position. But no good will come from it. I think about that line from A Course in Miracles, would you rather be right or happy? And I know if I'm right, I will be happy, but that's not the principle here. The principle is I'm gonna go <laughs> for happiness, right? Oh, so, so I just wrestle with this, you know? I wrestle with it and wrestle with it and wrestle with it, and then it occurs to me, the truth is I do not have the emotional energy to put into that so what I must do is I have to let go of it. I have to surrender, I have to forgive, I have to let it be. Now, Emma Curtis Hopkins, one of our teachers, says that to be able to let it be is one of the highest practices. Now, she's not advocating uh, don't care about things. That's not what she's talking about at all. But to just allow to let it be is a very high spiritual practice because she says all is a f a unfolding according to a divine and perfect order. So when I tell myself, I don't need to be angry or resentful, I don't need to be crazy about this, in that moment, I am actually resurrected. Now, I will tell you in all honesty that my evolved position on this issue did not come immediately. And I would equate that to the three days in the tomb. That, and, and, you know, because the, it, it takes time. It takes time to go from crucifixion to resurrection, and that could be, you know, three days, three hours, three weeks, three minutes. I think it's a little more than three minutes in most cases for most people, honestly. And so there was a period of time before I realized I don't need to put my emotional energy into that. I should take my emotional energy and put it into something that's more life-expanding and more life-affirming and more life loving than some notion that somebody has done me wrong. See, we're just resurrected every time we let go of a past hurt. Every time our lives are filled with so much he said and she said and they did this. So to embrace this change, I think this, this will be different for many of us. You know, it might even be a little bit difficult. We're after something different though. It's internal. This is what we're after. If you don't have it, you can't give it, because the truth is you can't give anything to other people that you are not in possession of yourself. People might not be thrilled with this light and love, but that's no reason for you not to be the best version of yourself. You know, Gandhi said that almost anything you do will be utterly insignificant, but it is of the utmost importance that you do it. See, we do things and we think, oh, that didn't make a change, that didn't make a difference, but we don't know. We don't know, and it's essential that we be people who choose to do the right thing because we know it's the right thing to do. We are aligned with God, that spirit of love and truth that is within us, and we are most aligned with it when we know we are doing the right thing. You know, this will often mean that, that all, the, all that motivates us to do something is that we just know this is how we're supposed to be in expression in the world. This is what God, what Spirit has given us to do. You know, the world generally thinks from fear, doesn't it? You know, and, 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 uh, the world is always interested in what's in it for me. You know, not from the development of how will this allow the love that's within me to come forward into the world and somehow be a blessing. You know, if you come from the God in you, the God in other people has an opportunity to respond. But if you don't come from the God in you, there's no opportunity for the God in other people to respond. That's a new idea. That's new wine that we're putting into a new skin. You know, you are a spiritual being with work to do, important work to do. Do not kid yourself and think, oh, I'm just here to hang out in this lifetime. You are not. Nobody came here to just hang out. You are in the world as a spiritual being, but you are not of it, carrying this new content within you, within me. You know, the world is never going to give us permission the way humanly we want the world to give us permission. 
Where does that come from? That comes from an inner knowing, an inner impartation, an inner transmission from the Spirit of God within us, to us, through us. You know, so when the idea becomes real within us, the outer form to support it always, always will appear. Um, I think largely that the world out here, although I believe it's getting better, a large percentage of the world is sort of mired in habitual, limited, and negative thinking. And we have to take, uh, we have to take seriously, really seriously, what we as spiritual beings are here to do. To be the presence of light, to be the presence of love, of peace, of healing, of joy, of creativity. We often say there's one problem in the science of mind, and that's a belief that we could be separate from God. And so there's one solution, and that solution is to join in oneness, in conscious awareness of our oneness with God. You know, you are aware that the more conscious we become, the more accountable we are. This is <laughs> not always good news. It means there's no going back. We can't pretend that we don't know how spiritual principle operates once we do. Right? And, and in A Course in Miracles, again, it says that ideas are strengthened by being shared. You know, so the more we agree that love is a good way to be, the stronger that idea gets. You know, that you come from your heart and life, and I try to come from my heart and life. And the more we do that, the more we'll see other people are doing it as well. Um, what you and I were yesterday is not what we want to be today. Knowing that the good stuff is not going to go away, but we keep moving forward, taking the good, the good qualities, the good attributes of spirit within us, we, we carry those forward into each new experience. So our prayer actually is to be made new. I don't know where you're experiencing crucifixion in your life right now today, but I suspect you are. Some people are experiencing crucifixion because they're looking to get a shot. Some people are experiencing crucifixion because they don't want a shot. Whatever it is, it's okay. That's your experience. But know that there is a period of time, something like three days, three weeks, three minutes, three months, where you will be resurrected from this experience of being in the tomb. A little girl in Sunday school was asked, who made you? And she said, well, God made part of me. And the Sunday school teacher said, what do you mean God made part of you? Uh, I don't understand. How could God make just part of you? And the little girl looks up and she says, God made me real little, and I grew the rest. <laughs> well, well, that's applicable to us because here we are, and we grow the rest. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward right now, recognizing the infinite spirit of life and love that's everywhere and right where we are. We know that God is uniquely individualizing as each and every one of us. We are emanations of the Most High God. So in this awareness of our connection with the infinite loving spirit, I speak the word for each and every one of us that where there is the appearance of crucifixion in our life, we stand open willing vessels to receive all that we need to receive and learn all that we need to learn and heal all that needs to be healed so that we might experience our own personal resurrection. This is what I claim for us this day, that our time in the tomb is of great value, that we look within, that we reflect, and we discard what no longer serves us, and we open to a greater revelation of that presence of the living spirit that has its way by means of each and every one of us. So we include in our prayer today our family members, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear, and we know that right where they are, the fullness, the allness of God's Spirit is right there. We let our prayer be a blessing energy out into the earth so that all those situations that pull at our attention, we say Spirit right there, love right there, God's perfect action right there. So we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that there is a raising up in consciousness today. There is healing for each and every one of us. And so with a full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law. And so it is. Together we all say amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed.
blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so blessed All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. In the name of love, in the 
Jamie Lula. Thank you, Jamie. You can get more of Jamie's musical inspiration from his website, jamielula.com. That's J-A-M-I-L-U-L-A dot com. A reminder that uh, we are here. If you'd like to make donations over the phone, you can do so by calling the church for about 30 minutes after service. Uh, that's 818-762-7566. And we can take your donation by either credit or debit card. Or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org, and then forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page where you can either make a one-time or uh, set up recurring uh, offerings at um, the website there. You can also text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. And of course, you can continue to mail your checks. But once again, thank you so much for all the ways you continue to support us so we can be here for you. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service on Zoom. If you're on Facebook Live right now, just go to our website, nhcrs.org, and connect with us on Zoom. We can put you in a private breakout room, one-on-one -on -one with a practitioner for prayer. You can continue to email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org, or call the church office, 818-762-7566, and option four allows you to leave a voicemail message with your prayer request that we check the emails and the voicemails and get all those requests out to our practitioners so you'll be well supported in prayer. Wednesday evening service, our meditation, same links on Facebook Live and Zoom, uh, the meditation before service starts at 6.50 p.m. Service starts at 7. And my topic this week is our Moses moments. thought we'd go with that Passover theme and look at good old Moses and how he plays a role in our lives. Grief support group. Uh, this group, facilitated by our wonderful practitioner, Carol Winokur, is meeting today on Zoom at 1 p.m. So any kind of grief you or if you know others who are going through some kind of grief experience, Carol is really a master at helping people through this process. So please take advantage of that. We're having a special Good Friday service. Uh, really excited. So that's this coming Friday, April 2nd, and that will be on Zoom and Facebook Live again. I'll be joined by our wonderful Reverend Nadine and practitioners Bill Carpenter, Mary Hyland, and Robert, Robin Wolford. And um, so as Dr. Mark talked about, our personal crucifixion experiences or our little tendencies to crucify others in our thoughts, uh, we hope you'll join us for this service where we'll look at that and some of the teachings that Jesus gave us on how to rise above those patterns. We're also being joined by our wonderful musical director, Sam Krieger, and uh, Tina Meeks will be our soloist. So really, really looking forward to you joining us for that. If you were not able to watch the spring concert um, when we had that a few weeks back, and you missed that, that was with our uh, awesome Bill A. Jones and Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen, you can still purchase a ticket and watch a replay. If you go to our website, you'll see the information for that. And before I move on to closing out the announcements, I didn't acknowledge our wonderful Sam and Karen for music. So thank you to both of you. <laughs> So finally, uh, Zoom virtual patio. Connect with your congregants, uh, fellow congregants before and after service on Zoom. We open that up about 20 minutes before our Sunday and Wednesday uh, services, and um, we stay on afterwards so people can visit and still feel that sense of community. Our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 a.m. on Zoom. And we have our Zoom meditation that continues Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15 in the morning. So information for all of that and so much more available on our website, again, nhcrs.org. With that, thank you again for being with us. And uh, as we move into this 
season of all these holidays. Just thank you for staying connected with us. Let's come together and join in singing the peace song. Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.